Vieux Montreal is where the city began, and its original foundations and streets are preserved in the Pointe à Calière Museum. This was the heart of the colonial town, and its old buildings make it the most picturesque neighborhood in the city. This is where you'll find most of the historic attractions, as well as a popular waterfront promenade along the Vieux Port or Old Port. Fewer tourists spend time in the plateau, but it is the heart of French-speaking Montreal. Strolling along Rue Saint-Denis often feels like being in Paris, with its smart boutiques, restaurants and sidewalk cafes. Some of the city's most popular restaurants are here, both along Rue Saint-Denis and elsewhere in this neighborhood that was largely formed by successive waves of immigrants. At its far edge is Mile End, where small groups of streets have distinctly Italian, Portuguese or Greek atmospheres. Learn more about the best places to visit in this multifaceted city with our list of the top attractions and things to do in Montreal. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 rated attractions and things to do in Montreal. And just wait until you see the number one that we're going to be showing in this video. Something you would never even have thought of. So make sure you watch till the end. Oh, before we begin, you can help support our channel by becoming a member of this channel. Press the join button below. This will help us to bring you more awesome travel videos. So now let's cut to the chase. At 10, Place des Arts. The Place des Arts is an entire complex dedicated to visual and performing arts, the largest of its kind in all Canada. Three great cultural organizations make their home here, the Montreal Symphony Orchestra, Le Grand Ballet Canadien and the Opera de Montreal, and its various stages and rehearsal halls provide venues for all kinds of theatre, music, dance, films and events. These sit around a large esplanade decorated with works of art, fountains and water cascades, a popular venue for events. The most important of these is the annual Summer Festival International de Jazz de Montreal, held in late June and early July, attracting visitors from all over the world and bringing in some of the biggest names in jazz. The Musée d'Art Contemporain de Montreal, a contemporary art museum, is particularly worth a visit, especially as young French-Canadian artists are accorded special prominence. At 9, Pointe à Calière. At one corner of Place Royale in Vieux Montreal is the Pointe à Calière, now marked by a striking modern building housing a museum of archaeology and history. Place Royale was the center of life in Montreal's early and colonial days, where the market and parade ground were located until later government buildings displaced them. But underneath today's Montreal, remnants of these early streets and foundations still remain, and you can explore these on a visit to the museum. The route through the city's history begins underground, where you can walk among the original stone-paved streets, drainage channels and ground floors of 17th century buildings. The story unfolds in layers of history told through artifacts, maps and exhibits as you climb through the museum. Special exhibitions cover a wide range of history and archaeology worldwide. Next up at 8, Musée des Beaux-Arts or Fine Arts Museum. The Musée des Beaux-Arts is the oldest museum in Canada and houses vast collections of painting, sculpture and new media. Its outstanding collections of world cultures and Mediterranean archaeology total nearly 10,000 objects, and there are excellent collections of African, Asian and Islamic art, as well as art from North and South America. The more than 1,400 paintings, sculptures, drawings and prints include masterpieces by Peter Bruegel, the Younger, Canaletto, El Greco, Gainsborough, Goya, Mantegna, Poussin, Rembrandt, Tiepolo and Veronese, and are particularly strong in artworks of the Dutch Golden Age. The collections continue through the realists and impressionists to modern art, containing works by Cezanne, Dali, Miro, Monet, Deran, Kandinsky, Matisse, Picasso, Rodin, Otto D and other influential artists. Well, at least I heard of Picasso. Not far from the museum is the extensive campus of McGill University. Next up at 7, Parc Jean Drapeau. Ile Saint Helene, named after the wife of Samuel de Champlain, and the artificial island of Notre Dame were the site of Expo 67. They are now known as Parc Jean Drapeau and have many family minded attractions. A remnant of the 1967 World Fair, the Blosphere is now a museum dedicated to ecological issues. The building is designed in the shape of a sphere and is the largest such structure in the world. 
Other tourist attractions on the island include the rides and games of La Ronde Amusement Park, the historic 1820 British Arsenal at the Stuart Museum, Bassin Olympique, where the Olympic rowing events were held, and race course Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. At 6, Oratoire Saint Joseph, Saint Joseph's Oratory. The Oratoire Saint Joseph, near the western exit from Mount Royal Park, is dedicated to Canada's patron saint. It is a mecca for pilgrims, with its huge Renaissance style dormed basilica dating to 1924. Brother Andre of the Congregation de Sainte Croix had already built a small chapel here in 1904, where he performed miraculous acts of healing for which he was canonized in 1982. His tomb is one part of the sanctuary in the original chapel. Votive gifts are displayed in a second chapel. A cloister behind the church leads up to Mont Royal. There is a good northwest view from the observatory over Montreal and Lac Saint Louis. At 5, Notre Dame Basilica. Founded in 1656, Montreal's oldest church, Notre Dame Basilica stands in a far grander incarnation than the original. The twin towers of the neo Gothic facade face Place d'Armes. The intricate and resplendent interior was designed by Victor Bourgeau. Highlights are the magnificent carved pulpit by sculptor Louis Philippe Ebert, 1850-1917, the 7,000 pipe organ by the Cassavant Frère firm, and the stained glass windows portraying scenes from the founding of Montreal. The admission charge to the Basilica includes a 20-minute tour, or you can take a one-hour tour that gives more historical information and access to private areas, including the second balcony and crypt. At 4, Jardin Botanique, Botanical Garden. High above the city in the grounds that hosted the 1976 Summer Olympic Games, Parc Maisonneuve, Pierre Neuf Metro, is the site of Montreal's wonderfully imaginative botanical garden. The diverse plants are grown in 30 themed gardens and 10 exhibition greenhouses, so a wide range of climates are represented. Outdoor gardens include the beautiful Japanese and Chinese gardens, as well as those devoted to alpine, aquatic, medicinal, shade, useful and even toxic plants. The rose displays are stunning and especially interesting is a garden devoted to those plants grown or used by First Nations peoples. Soaring greenhouses contain a tropical rainforest, ferns, orchids, bonsai, bromeliads and penjings, miniature Chinese trees. There is also an interesting insectarium and huge arboretum on the grounds as well as ponds supporting a variety of birds. At 3, see the view from Mont Royal. Mont Royal rises 233 meters above the city and is the green lung near the city center. A stroll through this lovely park enables the visitor to see monuments to Jacques Cartier and King George VI, to spend some time by Lac au Castor, and to have a look at the cemeteries on the western slope where the city's different ethnic groups have rested in peace together for centuries. From the summit, or rather from a platform below the cross, there unfolds a magnificent panorama of the whole of the 51-kilometre length of the Ile de Montréal and the saint Lawrence. On clear days, the view extends to the Adirondack Mountains in the United States of America. Next up at 2, explore the old port, Vieux-Port. As you wander around Old Montreal, you'll most likely end up in the lively area by the St. Lawrence River, known as the Old Port or Vieux-Port. Here you'll find plenty of things to do, from riding the giant ferris wheel or climbing the famous clock tower, right through to screaming down a zip line that descends from dizzying heights across open stretches of water. No thanks. More sedate options include strolling the area and taking in some of the 10 fascinating displays of public art, catching a show at the IMAX theatre or brushing up on your knowledge at the Montreal Science Centre. Even if those options sound exhausting, Grab a coffee and sit on one of the sunny patios and just soak up the scene. In the summer, boat tours leave from the docks here. If you really want to soak up the sun, there is even a man-made beach at the base of the clock tower with views back to the city or out over the river. In the winter, strap on your skates and take a twirl on the huge ice skating rink. Or just go for a beer. And finally, at number one, wander through Old Montreal, Vieux Montreal. Old Montreal is tourist central in Montreal. The area is home to a remarkable concentration of buildings dating from the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries and has the delightful feel of a Parisian-style quarter. Many of these historic buildings are now hotels, restaurants, galleries and souvenir shops. 
If you're looking to base yourself in the city for a few days of sightseeing, this is the best place to stay. Its many historic sites, streets and landmarks are easily explored on foot. Of the many things to do here, the highlights are visiting the Notre Dame Basilica, strolling down Rue Saint-Paul, wandering around Bon Secours Market and enjoying the open-air gathering space of Place Jacques Cartier. For a little urban adventure, on the waterfront is the huge Ferris wheel, La Grande Rue de Montreal and the Tyrolean MTL zip line. In the evening, old Montreal comes to life with patios and restaurants lining the streets. In the summer, you can dine outdoors, either street side or on rooftop patios. And there you have the very top 10 best things to do in Montreal. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your French loving friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. See you next time.